so hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel so for today we will be discussing n meetings in one room problem so basically in this problem uh, what we are given is we are given start time which is s array and finish time which is f array so for example there are given six meetings n is number of meetings and this is the start time of first meeting and this is the finish time of first meeting so for example the first meeting will start at one o'clock and it will finish at two o'clock suppose similarly the second meeting will start at three and will finish at four so what we are given is we are given that there is only one meeting room and there are six meetings scheduled at these times we need to tell how many meetings can be conducted in that one room and also at a time only one meeting could be conducted in that one room so we are given one room and we need to tell how many meetings can be conducted in one in that one room the condition is that only one meeting can be conducted at a time so these are the out so this is the input which is given let's discuss uh, this input this is quite big one so let's discuss this one so uh, i have already written this over here so this is the start time and this is the end time array okay so let's discuss the approach so basically what we need to do we need to tell the mm, count we need to tell the count of how many meetings can be conducted in uh, in that one room so one it is sure that one meeting will be conducted like always one will be always there and we need to have maximum to maximum number of meetings in that room so when we have like maximum or minimum of something the first approach which comes into our mind is greedy like we want to have maximum number of meetings in that one room because in the question it's given we need to return the maximum number so we will do greedy so we will use the greedy approach so one conclusion which we found out from our discussion is that we will be using greedy approach okay now the second observation is how we will use greedy so if we think if the finish time of meeting is less means the meeting is finishing earlier so the next meeting could start earlier that means so what we will do is whenever we know it's greedy we know sorting will be there most of the time sorting will be used so if we sort the end time or the finish time so we will get to know that okay the finish time is sorted which means the meetings are arranged now in a sorted manner such that the meeting which has a lower finishing time is will is the, is coming first and then the meeting with next uh, uh, like next and next so we will be arranging the end time in sorted order so this is basically the approach so already in this example the end time is in sorted fashion 2 4 6 7 but now a case is there for example if we had like this 2 6 4 7 9 nine. so in this case the start time for 6 will be 3 but when we will sort this array it will become 2 4 6 7 9 nine. and we will lose the start time for 6 now the start time for 6 is corresponding to this 0 but actual start time for 6 was 3 so this means what we need to do over here is we need to suppose we have a list in which we have pairs so we have start time or we can say we have end time and then start time this is for the first meeting then second meeting start time end time and start time and so on so we will be sorting the 
this this array with respect to the first item in this pair which is the end time so this is already sorted so we have sorted the end time and this is the start time now let's uh, let's I, let's go to the algorithm how we will do this so uh, initially let's take two variables um let's take two variables s will be initial so first meeting will always be scheduled so let's s will be the start time of first meeting and e will be the end time of the first meeting two okay now this is the first meeting which is getting scheduled from 1 pm to 2 pm and now second meeting could only start if the end if the start time of the second meeting is greater than the end time which means like suppose think think this think like this when this min this meeting will finish this meeting then only the other meeting could start and if the other meeting start time is between these this duration then it obviously it could not start right so basically now we will compare this one this start that if the start time if si is greater than the previous end so we know 2 3 is greater than 2 yes so this meeting can take place so since start time s of i i we will start i from 1 so since s of i which is 3 is greater than n time which is 2 so count will be increased by 1 similarly now i will be increased to 2 we will see start time of i which is 0 and also whenever we go over to the other meeting we will update these two variables so end time will become 4 this is 4 and start time will become 3 now we will check if 0 is greater than the end time which is 4 that means if this third meeting could be scheduled after the second meeting no we can't do this because the, the second meeting is already ending at 4 how we can start a meeting which is starting from 0 right so we can't do that so we will go we will move the i and we will not increment count because this condition is not true then after that what we will do is uh, this is 3 and we will go to 3 now i will be incremented and now it will come over to 5 now 5 is greater than the end time 4 yes yes that means 1 2 3 4 and then we can schedule 5 6 5 7 so this 5 will be so s will be updated to 5 and this will be updated to 7 and count will increment to 3 then we will move i to 4 this one and then we will check if s of i which is 8 um, let me do over here if 8 is greater than uh, 7 end time yes so we can also include this meeting so after 5 7 8 9 can be there scheduled in the same room so we will increment count we will update s which is 8 9 and i will be incremented to 5 for the next iteration we go over here now s of i is 5 which is an e value is 9 now 5 is not greater than 9 hence we will not increment count and we will and the array is ended and the count value is 4 so basically this is the algorithm how we will iterate through and this is the approach this is the greedy approach because we are sorting the end time we are sorting the end time because we want to have maximum number of meetings and the finishing time of the meeting with like the, with the meeting which is early, uh, finished earlier will be taken first so let's see the code for this problem so this is python code over here i have taken a list and then i have gone through the star uh, uh, array and i've just stored a pair of end time and start time you can do before start time like you can do start time comma end time also 
uh, but because like then it will uh, i have like uh, written sort using the first over here like key is that it, the item will be sorted according to the first value in the pair which is the end time then count variable initialize to one start variable taken which will be the first pair in the list and of that pair the second value that is at index one is your start time this one and the first pair in the list and in that also the end time which is at zero index so that then after that taken a loop which will run from one to n if the start time one one index is the start time if the start time of current meeting is greater than the end time means it's starting after the end time of the previous meetings yes we can include that and we will update the start time as well although the start time is not needed so what we can do is we can avoid using start time because every time we are just checking the previous end time so then after that we can return count and if we run this this perfectly works it works and then if we submit it submitted so the time complexity for this code is since we are sorting so time complexity will be o of n log n and since we are storing pairs in a separate list so the space complexity will be o of n for n pairs because there are n start n meetings so i hope you uh, learned something from the video i hope it helped and if it helped just uh, please share and do subscribe thank you